guinea pigs one here today. Today's topic is caring for hairless guinea pigs. A quick disclaimer, is everybody going to agree with everything I say in this video? No, but that's nothing new. Does everybody look after their hairless guinea pigs exactly as I do? No, which is okay. All this video is for is to help others out, to share my personal experiences, to share what I know works, and things that I highly recommend you do. Hopefully this will help you look after yours maybe a bit better, maybe it'll give you some ideas to try. If you're researching about hairless guinea pigs, maybe when I talk about them more you're going to realize they're not the pet for you, or they are the pet for you. So first off, I personally right now have four hairless male guinea pigs. They are the skinny pigs. There are bald ones and they're skinny pigs. Skinny pigs have fur just on their face, their feet, some on their body. Bald ones are completely naked. So my boys, they are from three months old to seven years old. So first, why are they hairless? In simple terms, without getting too far into this, if a mother carries the hairless gene and the father carries the hairless gene, you're going to get hairless offspring. I'm not into talking about whether it's ethical to breed hairless animals or to own them. All of my boys are adopted. So let's start off with housing. Housing is super important when you're thinking about getting hairless guinea pigs. First, bedding. I highly recommend you use a paper-based bedding, something that is soft or fleece bedding like I personally use. If you're going to use something like Aspen shavings, you do run the risk of irritating their skin and it's just not as comfortable. Do people use it and does it probably work okay? Sure, but you need to be aware and check them to make sure it's not irritating their skin. Next is the hugest thing, temperature. You need to keep their room about 70 to 76 degrees. So a lot of people, maybe this is going to be a turn off for you because you don't want to have that much heat in their room area, but it is a must. They do not have any fur, so they do not have any way to help control their body temperature. Piggies with fur, that helps insulate them to keep them warm and keep them cool. So skinny pigs, they require heat from another source. I personally use, right currently I have a Honeywell portable heater that I set to 72 degrees and it comes on when it needs to, keeps a really nice room temperature. You could just keep your whole house 72 degrees but that's not always very realistic. You could look into heat lamps, I personally have never used one. You would want to be very careful that you're not going to burn their skin. And if they are getting too cold and can't keep up their body temperature, they're going to be losing weight because they're going to be going through calories like crazy to try to keep their body temperature up. And they're also, that's going to lower their immune system, so they're going to be more likely to get ill. So it's super important. Another thing to note is they are indoor animals. Under no circumstances are you to keep these poor things outside. As I said before, they have nothing to protect them to regulate their temperature. You could not put them outside. I highly recommend, even if you use shavings or disposable bedding of any kind, get a snuggle sack so that they have somewhere warm to sleep in and somewhere super comfortable. When you're sleeping, you're not moving around, so you're more likely to get cold when you're sleeping. So having a nice fleece snuggle sack is a great way to ensure that they're warm even when they're sleeping. Well, another factor to consider, since they are hairless and they have to keep up their body temperature or use more calories, they are going to eat more, which means more pooping, more peeing. My cage that has two skinny pigs in it, it's a poo party and they drink a lot of water as well. Where a cage with two furry pigs, it's a lot less poops and they go through less water, less food. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's talk about the other super important thing is maintaining healthy skin. Since they don't have any fur, they require their natural skin oils to keep their skin looking nice. This means if you are bathing them, you are taking away those natural skin oils and you're risking them getting dry or having irritated skin. My rule for bathing, which everybody might not agree on, is only when needed. 
So when it comes to my younger boars, they don't get any bass at all ever, unless they had a little foot soak if they had poop stuck on their foot. Otherwise, they are clean animals, they self-clean. I find no reason to bath them. My senior, he has bad arthritis, so he lays around in his poo and pee more. So twice a week, he gets a tummy bath, where I wash his tummy, his groin, his back legs and feet. And I only use Gorgeous Guineas Kind and Gentle Shampoo. You need to be super careful what you are bathing them with or you could irritate their skin. So Kelvin, who is my senior, I don't bath him all over because I don't want to disrupt the skin oils all on his rest of his body, just where it's needed. So that's pretty much what I stand with. So there are different types of skin that you're going to find with your skinny pigs. There's the oily skin boys or girls. There's the normal skin and there's the dry skin. For the oily skin, you're gonna get lots of oily buildup along the back and on their hind end. I find, kind of like teenagers, that when they're younger is when their skin is most chaotic and sometimes they grow out of it. So if they have oily skin buildup, that's dead skin cells that you need to gently exfoliate and remove. It can be itchy for them and the skin underneath is not being able to breathe. So what you use is cold pressed coconut oil and a soft cloth. You get the coconut oil, rub it between your hands, get it warmed up, put it all over them, put a nice generous amount, put some on a soft cloth and gently wipe them down. Do not do it too rough because it would hurt them. You might have to do this two or three times to get all the skin oils off, but that's all you do. Just sit and gently wipe it off and then you're done. And this is something you just do as needed. Now for the normal skin, this, they don't look dry, they don't look oily, their skin looks perfect. Don't mess with what looks good. I don't put coconut oil on the boys who have normal skin because you don't want to mess with something that isn't broken. And there's a fine line between helping and hurting. So if you start messing with their skin too much, you might irritate it and actually cause it to turn dry or cause it to get over oily. So normal skin, just leave it be. So dry skin, again this is something I find when the piggies are younger, kind of in their hormonal, some parts of them might be dry, some might be oily. What I find most is for my little boy who's three months old, he gets dry ears. So all I do is take some coconut oil, rub it between my fingers, rub it on his ears, and I do that morning and night and as soon as I notice that the dry skin is taken care of I stop because again fine line between helping and hurting and if they have like a dry skin patch on their body just put a little coconut oil and I find being consistent with that helps it go away quicker so doing it morning and night and as soon as it looks good leave it be you do not want to use any oils or any human lotion or baby lotion just stick with the coconut oil. Guinea pigs self-clean, so anything you put on them, they are ingesting. It can get in their eyes, their ears, their mouth. So you need to be super careful. So that kind of brings me to taking them outside. If you're taking your skinny pigs outside, you need to know that it's a perfect temperature. They cannot be in direct sunlight. Sure, maybe for a minute, but they need to be in shade. Never put sunscreen on them because as we talked about before, whatever you put on them, they're cleaning off, ingesting it, getting into their eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. So outside you need it to be, I usually wait till it's like the high 70s, low 80s, maybe just a very mild breeze, put them in the shade, give them their water, make sure they're covered. So the next thing that's super important is nail care. This is something that I kind of learned as I went along. No matter what clippers you use, they're not always 100% perfect and little sharp points can be there. Especially when you have baby pigs, their nails are very sharp. When they just naturally give themselves an itch, they are very likely to scratch their skin and break the skin. So not only does that hurt them, but their nails aren't always the cleanest. So that could cause, say, like a little bit of an infection if they had poop on their nail and scratch it into their skin. So what I do is clip their nails and then file all of their back nails to make sure there's no points and that works perfectly so I don't have any piggies with scratches on themselves because I do nail care so what you would do is just gently hold the toe 
file it down. Hold the next toe, file it down, and I always just feel with my finger to see if I feel any sharp points. And that works perfectly. So I guess that pretty much sums up my major points is be mindful of their bedding, of the temperature, I always keep them indoors. If you are taking them outside, be very cautious. Be very cautious about what you're putting on their skin, how often you're bathing them. They can be more maintenance to look after, but as long as you're willing to put in that extra time and effort and to be careful, they're very worth it. They're awesome little critters. They aren't for everyone. So if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below and I always try to get back to as many people as I can. And again, this video was just for educational purposes, just trying to help people out. If you have a different opinion, that's okay. We all do, but this was just to help people. Okay, so thanks very much, guys, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.